All right. So we'll just open it up. When you're evaluating these quarterbacks, the rookies, what's the biggest deterrent? Not this class, but any class, just the position. That just uh, the command that they would have, the ability to learn, um, you know, how they process. Those are things that would, you know, really um, bother you as you're going through the process. But you also look about, about what they can do. Uh, is it correctable? Can you work with them? And so those are the biggest things. But those first three would probably be the biggest turnoffs looking at quarterbacks. Can you talk about where you see Terrace Marshall and Shai Smith in this offense? Yeah, I, you know, I'm really excited about both of them. Uh, Terrace really took off during OTAs early in the season and then uh, just kind of, you know, didn't have the, the production that we thought he might have. He's got all the talent in the world, and I'm really excited about his future. Uh, Shai, at, every day in practice, he made a great catch. Uh, did a lot of different things. We just need to have him find a spot on the special team. So whether it's a punt returner, as a gunner, that's how he's going to address consistently, and then he can be that fourth receiver and help us throughout the season. But I'm excited about the future for both. What are your plans to upgrade a quarterback? Well, I think we're going through the whole process right now. That's it's a really important uh, decision for us. Do we go the free agent route? Do we go through the draft? And uh, we're, we're fairly long, or fairly far along in the uh, quarterback evaluation on the college class. We've gone through it uh, from a free agent standpoint. We'll look at all other options that are out there. But that's definitely a priority for us, that as, long, as well as the offensive line. Speaking of the narrative You know what? Uh, we look at it a little bit differently. Um, we think there are some talent in this class. We think there's some guys that can come in and help us. Um, Probably overall, like through the media, that I, I totally hear that and I get that, and that's the common consensus. Uh, there's probably been stronger quarterback classes, but there are some guys in this uh, class that can play. Do you weigh the need for a quarterback in the offensive line versus the best value? So, how would you approach that? What do you know say to the uh, The need of offensive line compared to quarterback? Yeah. Well, obviously, it's going to be best available. We went into the soft season with an emphasis on the offensive line. Um, we see a lot of different options through free agency and through the draft, uh, how we can address offensive line, as well as quarterback. So the biggest thing we want to do is have options at, at pick six. Do we move back? Do we stay there and pick a franchise-type player at six? Is it the quarterback? Is it the offensive lineman? Um, that will come into focus. Uh, we feel like there will be a really good player there. Scott, you guys were connected to Watson last year. Do you think you'll be in on him again? And do you think he'll be moved before the draft? You know, he is under contract with another team, so I can't really say much about that. Um, I would say any player in general, uh, we always monitor and see what's happening uh, across the landscape. Christian McCaffrey and his injuries as of late, going into this season, same workload or any different idea of how you're going to use him? Yeah, I think uh, every year you evaluate, you know, what's best for each player, um, and not just Christian, but for everyone. Uh, yeah, I mean, the talk is he's been hurt the last couple of years. They've really been kind of freak injuries. The, the one in Miami was a freak injury. Someone fell on top of them. I think what we'll look at is are there different ways we can practice? Are there different um, things we can do during the week with Christian? I know he's very in tune with his body. He's really studying that as well. And uh, we'll do anything we can to help him. But uh, I think more than anything, those have kind of been more freak injuries than anything else. Scott, is he doing anything different in that regard to change up his own program? Or You know, sure I talked to him uh, when we left, like when the season ended, and uh, really haven't spent a lot of time with him since then. Uh, once they come back in OTAs, I know he was going to go, go out and examine what was the best process for him. We did talk about uh, different things we could do during the season back in January. But once he gets back and we get into the training aspect of it, that's when we'll kind of pin that down with him. Guy, could one of those things be more snaps for him out of the slot? I think we'll explore every option. Maybe that does take a little, little bit of uh, wear off his body. The one thing I know is we're a better team when he does have the ball in his hand. He, you know, he can, he's a playmaker from anywhere, you know, whether it's a slot or, or coming out of the backfield. Scott, if you do address the quarterback situation in free agency, what are you willing to give up? Or what or who? Well, it, it really depends on each person, like who it is. Um, we'll we'll um, evaluate the player and figure out what that compensation is. I can't say it's just like this, this, and this for any player out there. You know, a certain player at a certain level is going to command more, and uh, it's all treated individually. 
Scott, when you're thinking about drafting a quarterback, whether it's this year or in the past, your past experience, when do you get to the point where you feel comfortable enough to say, hey, what is the next year's quarterback class look like? Is there, is there enough projection there where you can feel sort of comfortable? We're well? already doing that. Yeah. Like You always want to look a year or two ahead. What's, what does it look like in the future? Because the one thing we want to do is we build this. We want to build it the right way, not force something. And so that's the biggest thing. We don't, we don't want to make the mistake of, oh, we need this right now. Let's fix this right now. Let's, let's keep the big picture in mind and know what it looks like a year or two out. We haven't Scott, spoken we're, with you. We're sort of in, a, in an era, and it's not a secret, like the quarterbacks, the value of the quarterback is much more today, right? Right. Uh, the evolution of the game, the rules, et cetera. Uh, so we know that, but is any part of that maybe somewhat a negative for the league in that in this way? Because it, you know, it makes yeah. mistakes. Like either, like I think it was uh, someone earlier saying, you either have a league quarterback and got a chance to win, or you don't. Is that a good thing for the league? Well, I don't know if you agree with that premise, but it's definitely nice when you have one. <laughs> you can definitely sleep better at night. Um, and you it know, doesn't mean like your team can yeah. be terrible. I mean, right? it's it's not like you can't win the Super Bowl with a. Um, you know, a good starting quarterback. You don't need to have the elite guy, and I think you've seen that kind of over time. Um, but you need to be able to surround them with players that can compensate for their some, maybe some of their weaknesses, maybe some receivers or running back or, you know, an offensive line where you can prote protect them more. So um, I think it's great to have stars and, you know, like these elite quarterbacks. They're fun to watch, but uh, I think there's ways you can go about maybe – if you don't have one compensating for that. We haven't harder. spoken with it is, it is harder. It is harder. I mean, everybody wants that, you know, <laughs> that, that number one guy. I'd love to have that. Uh, but we'll see where that goes. We haven't spoken with you since the Ian Thomas deal. Why was it important for you guys to yeah. extend that contract? Well, first of all, um, we see Ian, we signed two guys already, and, for, and we look at them as this free agent class and Ian being one of them. Uh, Ian, the way he plays for us, He's an inline blocker that has the ability to get down the seam. You know, I was telling people earlier, he's hit 20 plus miles an hour on the GPS. The guy, once he opens up, can really run. He's got receiving skills. He probably has not shown that as much, uh, uh, probably in the past year or two. And there's been other positions that have um, had troubles because of offensive issues. I do see a, uh, a big future with him. One thing that it does, having a guy like that, um, Defenses can't match personnel. When he comes in, they can't run, you know, another nickel on the field. They have to stay in their base personnel. So when you have a guy that can block in line, get down the seam, you know, and catch the ball, that, that really helps us. And that's one of the big factors. And that and Ben McAdoo and what how he uses tight ends in this offense, that was a big factor in this too. Like he identified this as a player that could really help us. And then the contract uh, itself, we took it right down the middle. He's a mid-level starting tight end. That's what you know how it, how he was paid. Uh, but we see big upside with him as a receiver, and then he's a really good blocker. Now, what about the timing of that? You guys have some pieces on the defensive side of the ball um, that you would like to perhaps bring back. So, what went into the timing of Ian's um, re-signing as opposed to a Hassan Ray, Stephon Gilmore, and those guys? Yeah. Well, we know we we want to bring those guys back, and the fact that we can get them done, meaning uh, Ian, get him done before free agency I thought really helped us that doesn't really take us out of any other issues that we have you know as far as signing guys but uh, that it was those were priorities for us to get our own guys back and reward people that have produced for us Scott what do you bring for you know it'll be interesting I think he can play you know probably three or four spots on the offensive line um, the one thing is when he went out and played left tackle this year he did really well for us talking to coach camp and you know our new old line coach you know he said, wow, I wish this guy would have played more. I wish you would have seen more of him at left tackle. Now, if we do go out and get a left tackle, he can easily play left guard, he can play right guard. Um, you know, there's even been some talk he could, he could play center, but we'll find a spot for him because he's one of our, our best. When you drafted him, Scott, do you think he could do all that? Show that versatility? He's a pretty athletic guy, and he's a smart guy, and it's really hard to play three or four different spots like he did this year as a rookie. I mean, it's hard as a third-year guy. And so I was really impressed with that aspect of it. And then as a left tackle, he's very patient. He's really smart. He's good with his technique. And so uh, I wouldn't say I was surprised, uh, but I was I was pleased with how he played. How's Cam, how's Cam Newton fit in your quarterback? Yeah, uh, one thing with Cam is when we sat down at Mr. Tepper's house, we always said after the season, when we you know come close to making a decision, uh, we'd, we'd have a discussion and uh, we'd talk uh, person to person first before we share anything.
Trading back in the draft? Oh yeah, I think we can definitely look at that. Now if there's a franchise type player that's sitting there and uh, we think this is a, a cornerstone for us for the next 10 years, we might just take them. You know, you don't, you don't pass on a really good foundation piece for your team. However, if there's, you know, if there's opportunities or the compensation is so much where you just can't pass on it, we'll always go back. We'll look at the other options because there's a lot of good players in this draft that can help us. Scott, was the Luvu signing, was the Luvu signing uh, insurance in the possibility or maybe even likelihood that you don't re-sign Reddit? No, I wouldn't say it's insurance. Uh, it's independent. We just identified him as a player that we wanted on this roster that can help us from a special team standpoint, a leadership standpoint, pass rush standpoint. And we think he can play on the edge and he can also play behind the ball as a linebacker. So he gives us a lot of flexibility. And then the person himself, we didn't want to lose him. He means too much to our team. Can he be a starter? He can be a starter, yes. You guys had, I think, like 18 different um, offensive line combinations. You talked about bringing Christensen and his versatility. How important is versatility for you guys in evaluating prospects or um, free agents for the for the offensive line? Yeah, I think it's always important to have some guys that can play multiple spots. There's the injuries during the season. Um, you know, if, there, if say we go out and we sign a guy, someone like Brady Christensen, if that person gets hurt, Brady can pop out a left tackle. He can go right guard. So versatility is always one of the most important things when we look at offensive linemen. To be clear on Cam, does that mean he's still an option for you guys out there? Yeah, they, we're, we're still open uh, to Cam. But again, we want to have that conversation uh, with him directly. Are you comfortable if all the dust settles and Darnold's still your starting quarterback? Can he be a playoff caliber quarterback, your Super Bowl quarterback like your owners mentioned? Yeah, i say Sam's the first to tell you he didn't play as consistent as he needed to last year. There are a lot of different factors in that, you know, including the offensive line, injuries with Christian. Um, but he does. He needs to take the next step. You know, we need stability at the quarterback position, whether that's Sam, whether that's someone, someone else, someone needs to take grab, you know, take hold of that position, and own that. And right now, it's it's open. If Sam does it, that'd be great. But it, it's open. Scott, I know a lot of these conversations happen this week, but what's your level of optimism of getting something done with Hassan? Yeah, you know, I I talked to Hassan's guys here. Uh, Tori Dandy's a, a good friend, and we've had a lot of uh, discussion really over the last couple weeks. And I think. Uh, Hassan has earned the right to go out and see what he can get. Uh, he's had two years in a row double-digit sacks, and you know he's going to command a lot of money on the market. And if he gets that, I'm happy for him. Um, we just want we just want the dialogue to be open and give us a chance, and we'll see where it goes. You know, <laughs> he's a great neighbor. I can tell you that. Um, yeah, we're going through that process as well. You know, we have to. To see see how that fits in, you know, we have Dante that's up as well. Uh, we made a move for C.J. Henderson last year, you know, to put us in a position so we're not like panicking or not forcing something that's there. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll stay in contact with him, Jason, his agent, as well as a good friend of mine. So, uh, there's ongoing talks. Uh, after two, you've talked about not panicking. Two five win seasons. How do you balance not panicking but having a sense of urgency when it comes to I tell you what, winning can't happen fast enough around here. I think there is urgency, and there's an opportunity this year. And I think as long as we make keep making good decisions one after another and keep stacking this and building it the right way, it'll happen. Um, I know for Mr. Tepper and Nicole, it can't happen, you know, fast enough. Or for myself or Coach, and, and I get the I get the frustration from the fan base because we need to win. This that's our responsibility. We need to put a a product on the field that can win, and so that's our emphasis. And uh, love for it to be this year. Do you go into this off season? Do you go into this off season thinking how many starters do you think you have right now on the over? How many starters do I think we have? I mean, Moat and beyond. Well, I, I tell you what, um, talking to Coach Camp, and I think he's he's optimistic about guys that we do have on the roster and their development, and guys he thinks he can play. Or, um, and then we're also going to go outside. We are going to address this in free agency in the draft as well. So we'll get that position settled. That's been an emphasis from day one since the season ended is getting this offensive line right. And that's what our, our focus is. Scott, you met with a lot of these quarterbacks already at the senior bowl. How do those interviews differ or evolve out here? Uh, 
they've been good. You know, at the Senior Bowl, we can take more time with them, or you know, you can talk to them on the phone, do different conversations. Here, it's such a it's a 20 minute snapshot, and how much can you really find out about a quarterback in 20 minutes? You can get a feel for their personality, but to really dig in and get to know them. We're going to go out to their pro day. We'll fly them in. We'll, the quarterback position is such a hard position to evaluate, and the the character makeup more than any other spot is, is such a major factor. So we can't spend enough time learning who these guys are. So we're going to do that. All right, this, is, this will be the last. Who's, who's asking? We'll do a dangle to the side. Who else? Right. Oh, man, go ahead, man. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, the NFL stopped requiring the Wonderlift test, I know, this year. This first time they did it for like three years, I think. How did you feel about that as an evaluation? I know some teams are still doing it on their own. Is it something that you're still doing? Did you find value in it, or are you kind of replacing it with a different type of draft? Well, I think, yeah, we'll be creative about how we re, uh, replace that. You know, it's, it's been a comfort factor more than anything. Like, yeah. hey, what do you get? Okay. Um, but it really doesn't measure like a person's intelligence and processing and um, other aspects of learning. So it, we could actually be better off like digging into the player and finding out how they learn other other ways than just the wonder lick. Yeah, is there yeah. a better way? That uh, we're exploring. We're exploring that. We're you know we have different testing uh, um, companies that we use, and then also just getting them on the board. How do they learn football? Talking to the people in the building that they have that have coached them. That's, that's the biggest thing. The wonder looks just like a number. That it's really about how to teach them how they learn what the, what the, who the student is. And that's, a, that's what we're trying to figure out. All right, thank you, Scott.